Skills of Communication English Class 10 Our first chapter is All Things Bright and Beautiful by C.F. Alexander Now read in We see and enjoy many things around us such as beautiful sunrise and sunset, trees and flowers, rivers and mountains, birds and animals. We smell the fragrance of the flower and we feel the changes of the season. We have eyes to see all these things and lips to praise all the beauty of the creation. Have you ever thought who has created such a beautiful things for us? Who has blessed us with the sense of sight, smell and feelings? Read the poem to know what the poet thinks about these things. Now the poem gets starts. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flowers that opens, each little birds that sings, He made their glowing colors, He made their tiny wings. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, He made them everyone. The tall trees in the greenwood, the meadow where we play, the rushes of the by the water we gathered every day. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is God Almighty who has made all things well. Now the poem gets finished and we will read about the poet. Cecil Francis Alexander was born in Dublin, Ireland in the year 1818. She is a famous human writer and the poet. Her famous works are Hymens for the Children, Christmas Carol, Once in a Royal David City, Verses of the Holy Season. This poem is included in the Hymens for the Children. Page number 3 Notes and Glossary Glowing means bright, purple headed, the ray of the setting sun makes the mountain top appears purple that is bluish red meadow an open area of grassland rushes varieties of waterside plant some of which are used for making mats and the baskets now let's read and understand number one what does the poet thinks of all things number two who had made all these things? Number three, what are the little things mentioned in the poem? Number four, how does the poet describe the beauty of the flower? Number five, how does the poet describe the little bird? Number six, how is the mountain described in the poem? Number seven, why does it appear so? Number eight, what brightens up the sky? Number nine, how does the sky look during the sunset? Number 10. What are the two seasons mentioned in the poem? Number 11. What does the poet consider the summer sun present? Number 12. What do we enjoy in the green wood? Number 13. How are the meadow useful for us? Where do the rushes grow? Number 15. Why do people gather dresses? Number 16. Why has God given his eyes? Number 17. What, do, what should our lips tell? Number 18. How does the poet describe God? Our next chapter is A Letter to God by G.L. Fluentes. Now read in. Have you ever written a letter to a God? Did you ever come across someone who is writing a letter to God? People believes in faith can move mountain, but what should we put our faith in? This is a question this story dedicately poses. Lencho is a farmer who writes a letter to a god asking for sum of money when his crops fails. Does Lencho's letter reaches to God? Does, does God send him the money? Think and try to answer this question before you begin to read this story. Try to imagine how it could be developed and what conclusion it might arrived at. Now the text gets starts. The house. The only one in the entire valley set on the crest of the lower hill. From this height one 
one would see the river and the field of the ripe crop dotted with the flower that always promised a good harvest the only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower throughout the morning lencho knew his field intimately and then nothing else but see the sky towards the north east now we are really going to get some of the water woman the woman who was preparing supper replies yes god willing the older boy were playing in the field while the smaller one were playing near the house until the woman called them to all come for the dinner it was during the meal that just as lencho had predicted a big raindrop began to fall in the north east huge mountains of cloud could be seen approaching the air was fresh and sweet the man went out for no other reason than to have a pleasure of feeling the rain on the body when he returned he exclaimed these are not raindrops falling from the sky these are the new coin the big coins are the 10 cent pieces and the little ones are the 5 with a satisfied expression he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flower draped in a curtains of rain but suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain very large hailstone began to fall these truly do resemble new silver coin the boy exploding themselves to the rain and rain, ran out to collect the frozen pearls It's really getting bad now exclaimed the man I hope it passed quickly It did not pass quickly for an hour the hail remained on the house the garden the hill sides the corn field on the whole valley the field was white as it was covered with a salt not a leaf remained on the tree the corn was totally destroyed the flower were gone from the plant Lencho's soul was filled with sadness. When the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his son, "A plague of locusts would have left more than this. The hail has left nothing. This year we will have no corn." That night was a sorrowful one. All our work for nothing. There is no one who can help us now. we all will go hungry this year but in the herd all who live in a solitary house in the middle of the valley there was a single hope that is the help of the god don't be so upset even though it seems like a total loss remember no one dies of hunger that's what they say no one dies of hunger although the night lenchos thoughts only for one hope that is the help of the god whose eyes he ha- he has been instructed see everything even what is deep in one's conscience lenchos was an ox of a man working like an animal in the field but still he knew how to write the following sunday at day breaks he began to write a letter which is himself would carry to the town and place in a mo- mail it was nothing less than but a letter of to the god god he wrote if you don't help me my family and i will go hungry this year i need a hundred of pesos in order to sow my field again and to leave until the crop comes because of the hailstorm he wrote to god on the envelope put the letter inside and still trouble went to town at the post office he placed the stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox one of the employee who was a postman and also helped the help at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to the god never he never in his career as a postmaster he had known this address the postmaster a fat amiable fellow also broke out laughing but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk commented what faith i wish i had the faith 
of the man who wrote this letter starting up the correspondence with the god so in order not to seek the letter of faith so in order not to seek the letter uh, writer's faith in god the postmaster came up with an idea answering to the letter but when he opened it it was evident that to answer it would answer it he needed something more than the good will ink and the paper but he stuck to his resolution he asked for some money from his employer he himself gave a part of his salary and the several friends of him were obliged to give something for an act of charity it was impossible for him to together together the 100 pesos so he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half he put the money in the envelope addressed to the lanchos and gave the letter containing only a single word as a signature that is the god the following sunday lanchos came up a bit earlier than as usual to ask if there is any letter for him it was a postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of the man who had post who has performed the good deed looked for looked on the looked on from the off, from his office lencho so not a slightest surprise on seeing the money such was his confidence but he became angry when he counted the money god could not have made a mistake nor he could have gave denied lencho what he had requested immediately rencho went up to the window to ask for a paper and a ink on the public writing table he started to write with much wrinkling on his brows caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas when he finished he went to the window to buy the stamp which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with the blow of his fist the moment the letter fell into the mail box the postmaster went to open it and said god oh the money that i asked for only 70 pesos reached me send me the rest since i need it very much but don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks lencho here the chapter gets finished and now we will read about the author the author g l flintus he lives from the year 1895 to the year 1966 was a mexican novelist poet and a journalist Fluitus started writing at the age of 15 when the Mexican Revolution began. Many of his books are related to the civil conflict. His stories are exciting and humorous. Many of his works are concerned with the operations of Americans. He was awarded the Nobel he was awarded the National Prize for Arts and Science in the year 1935. Now we'll read about notes and glossary. crest top or the highest part of the hill dotted with scattered over an area predict foretell the future drap cover locusts insects which flies in the big group to and destroy the crops solitary lonely or single upset distributed consigns an inner sense of the right and wrong peso currency of several latin american countries amiable friendly and pleasant correspondence an act of writing letter resolution a firm decision contentment satisfaction crook dishonest person or people now answer these question question number 1 where did lencho lives what did he hope for Question number three: What did he say about the rain drop? Question number four: How did the rain changes? Question number five: What happened to Lencho's corn field? Question number six: How did Lencho have faith in? 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन हु डिड ही राइट अ लेटर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर एट हु रिट्स द लेटर क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन वॉट डिड द पोस्ट मास्टर डू क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन वॉज लें टू सरप्राइज टू फाइंड द लेटर फॉर हिम विद द मनी इन इट क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन वॉट डिड लेंचोज रिएक्शन आफ्टर गेटिंग द लेटर नाउ नाउ अगेन आंसर द क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वाई डिड लेंचो स्किप्स ऑन लुकिंग एट द स्काई थ्रू आउट द मॉर्निंग क्वेश्चन नंबर टू वाई वॉज द फील्ड वाइट आफ्टर द स्ट्रोम क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री वाई डिड लेंचो से द रेन ड्रॉप्स वेर लाइक न्यू पॉइंट्स क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर वाई डिड लेंचोज प्रिफर ल्यूक्टस टू द स्ट्रॉन्ग क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव डिड लेंचोज ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट हु हैड सेंड दम हिम द मनी एंड वाई एंड वाई नॉट क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स वॉट वुड वॉट वुड बी द रिएक्शन ऑफ द पोस्ट ऑफिस इम्प्लॉय वेन दे रिड द सेकेंड लेटर अगेन आंसर्स द क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन हु डिड लेंचो हैव कम्प्लीटेड कम्प्लीट फेथ इन क्वेश्चन नंबर टू लेंचो वॉज एन ऑक्स ऑफ अ मैन वॉट डज दिस लाइन मीन क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री वॉट वॉज द पोस्ट मार्टर पोस्ट मास्टर लाइक क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर वाई डिड द पोस्ट मास्टर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर वाई डिड द पोस्ट मास्टर सेंड द मनी टू द लेंचो क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव एंड द लास्ट वन वाट डज द एक्सप्रेशन एंड एक्ट ऑफ चैरिटी मीन्स पेज नंबर नाइनटीन आवर थर्ड चैप्टर दैट इज वी आर सेवन बाय विलियम वर्ड्स वर्थ ना रेड इन There is something interesting in the way children see the world. They see things from a different perspective because of their simple nature. Read this poem to find out how an adult understanding of death differ from that of the little child. Now the poem gets start. A simple child that lightly drawn its breath and feels its life in every limb. What should it know of death? I met a cot- little cottage girl she was 8 years old she said her hair was have her hair was thick with many a curl that clustered around her head she had a rustic woodland air and she was widely clad her eyes were fair and very fair her beauty made me glad sisters and brother little maid how many may you be How many? Seven in all, she said, and wondering looked at me. And where are they? I pray you tell. She answered, Seven are we. Two of us at the convent dwell, and two are gone to sea. Two of us in the churchyard lie, my sister and my brother, and in the churchyard cottage I dwell near them with my mother. You say. that uh, you say that two or uh, two at the convent dwell and two are gone to see yet ye are seven i pray you tell sweet maid how this may be then did a little maid reply seven boys and girls are we two of us in the churchyard light beneath the churchyard tree You run about my little maid your limbs they are alive if if two are in the churchyard laid then ye are only five their graves are green they may be seen the little maid replies 12 steps or more from my mother's door and they are side by side my stockings there i often neat my kerchief there i heem and there upon the ground i sit and sing a song to them and often after sunset sir when the light when it is light and fair i take my little porringer and eat my supper there the first that was die was sister jena in bed she moaningly till god released released her of her pen and then she went away 
so in the churchyard she was laid and when the grass was dry together round her grave we play uh, my brother john and i and when the ground was white with snow and i could not run could and i could run and slide my brother john was forced to go and he lies by her side how many are you then i said if they two are in heaven quick was the maid, little maid reply oh master we are seven but but they are dead those two are dead their spirits are in heaven it was throwing words away for still the little maid would have her will and said no we are seven page number 23 about the poet william wordsworth lives from the year 1770 to 1850 was one of the greatest poet of the country and of natural life he regards nature as a great teacher and his poem seeks to establish the inmates relationship with it he also depicts a simple rustic life in a number of poems he is a author of several memorable lyrics such as daffodils the solitary reaper and the lucky poems and the lucy poems now about the poem in this poem was inspired by the poet's meeting a child near godrus castle in the vale in the year 1793 the poet began with the enchant thing image of the childhood which is marked by simplicity a life free of tension full of spirits and vigorous and unclouded by the knowledge of death the poet meets an 8 year old charming rustic girl and inquires about her family she replies that she ha- she lives with her mother and they are seven brothers and sisters out of whom two are in the graves the poet gets puzzled and insisted and insists that there are only five brothers and sisters since two of them are already dead and buried but the girl says that their graves are close to her house she emphasizes her association with the two in two dead brothers and sister telling the poet that she often needs her stockings and hymns her chips by their grave by their graves and sitting there sings a song to them and also takes her supper there the poem ends with the child moving an innocent statement that they are seven brothers and sister now we'll read the notes and the glossary cottage means a usually a small modest house of one story or a country residence clustered a number of things of same kind joined together rustic rural woodland pretending the woods air an apparent character assumed by the person character situation etc wildly uh in a disorder in a disorderly manner or carelessly clad cloth covered dresses fair pretty beautiful maid a girl wonder to express surprise amazement dwell leave inhabit reside church yard a burial ground adjoining the church stockings close fitting coverings usually necked for foot and a part and a part of the leg neat an interwove with the needles kerchief a cloth worn by the woman as the head covering or scarf hem the f- to fold back and chew down the edge of the clothes garments etc porringer a small dish for soup morning uttering the prolonged low and the intricate sound expressing the physical or the mental suffering released relieved set free slide to pass along smoothly spirit soul now understand the poem 
नंबर वन वाट नोटेबल फी वाट नोटेबल फीचर्स ऑफ अ सिंपल चाइल्ड डज द पोएट डिस्क्राइब्स इन द फर्स्ट स्ट्रेंजा नंबर टू वाट डज द पोएट राइट अबाउट द हैबिटेशन एंड द एपेरेंस ऑफ द गर्ल नंबर थ्री वाट डज द पोएट स्टार्ट सॉरी नंबर थ्री हाउ डज द पोएट स्टार्ट द कन्वर्सेशन विद द गर्ल्स विद द गर्ल एंड वॉट डज द गर्ल से इन रिप्लाई नंबर फोर वाट आंसर डज द गर्ल गिव टू द पोएट रिलेटिंग टू अर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर एंड मदर नंबर फाइव वॉट डज द वाट द नंबर फाइव वाई डज द आंसर गिवन बाय द गर्ल पजल्स द पोएट नंबर सिक्स वाट आर्ग्यूमेंट डज द गर्ल पुट फोर्थ टू प्रूव दैट हर टू डेड ब्रदर एंड सिस्टर हैव नॉट बीन सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम हर नंबर सेवन हाउ डज हर सिस्टर सफर बिफोर हर डेथ नंबर एट हाउ डज गॉड रिलीज जेना फ्रॉम हर सफरिंग नंबर नाइन What did she and her brother used to do around her sister's grave grave when the grass was dry number 10 at what time of the year did john die number 11 how does the poem ends now let's appreciate the poem number 1 what does the se- what does the second line of the first stranger that is that lightly drawn it's beneath suggest number 2 explain the meaning of the third line of the first stranger that is and feel its life in the explain the meaning of the third line of the first stranger that is and feel its life in every limb number 3 what does the poet write about the child knowledge of death Number four, describe the surrounding in which the poet finds the girl. Number five, why does the girl look wondering at the poet after answering his question about her family? Number six, what does the line "their graves are green" implies? Number seven, how is the time after sunset described by the poet? Number eight, what does the line And when the ground was white with snow, suggest number nine. What does the expression "it was throwing words away" means? Page number twenty-seven, chapter four, "Tryst with Destiny" by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Now read in. The Indian independence in 1947 marked as a turning point in the history of South Asia. The independent nations first few year were eventful the traumas of partition and of assassinations of Mahatma Gandhi made the people sad but Indian had a pledge to fulfill they had to build a progressive prosperous and a democratic nation by setting up the administrative legislative and judiciary system and establishing the infrastructure of the industry and agriculture the present peace is the full text of the speech of pandit jawahar lal nehru our first prime minister of india delivered the constituent assembly on the midnight of 15th August nineteen forty seven. Now the text gets starts. Long year ago, we made the trials with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in the full measure, but very substantially. At a stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, in India will awake to live and freedom. a moment comes which which comes but rarely in the history when we stop when we step out from the old to the new gener- new and when uh, when an age ends a moment comes which comes but rarely in the history when we step out from the old to the new 
when an age ends and when the soul of the nation long suppressed find a trance it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of dedication to the service of the india as and her people and to the still larger cause of humanity at the dawn of the history india start india started on her an ending quest and tackle the centuries are filled with the story and the grandeur of her success and failure though good and ill fortune alike she has never lost sight of the quest forgotten and the ideal which gave her strength we in to, we in today a period of misfortune and india discover himself again india discover herself again the achievement we celebrate today is but a step an opening of opportunity to the great trumps and the achievement that awaits us we are brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge for the future freedom and power brings responsibility the responsibility rest upon the assembly fred rest upon the assembly a sovereignism body representing the sovereignism people of india before the birth of the freedom we have endured all the pains of labor and our heart is heavy with the memory of this sorrow some of those pains continues even now nevertheless the past is over and it is the future that beckons us now that future is not one of the ease or resting but the incessant striving so that we may fulfill the place we have to often take ten and the one we shall take today the service of the indian means to serve the millions who suffer it means the ending of the poverty and ignorance and the disease and the inequality of the opportunities the ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe everyone's tears from everyone's eyes that may be beyond us but as long as there are tears and suffering so long our work will not be over and so we have to labor and to work and to work hard to give the reality to our dreams those dreams are for indians but they are also for the world for all the nations and the people are too closely knit together today for any one of them to imagine that it can live apart peace is said to be individual so is the freedom so is prosperity now and also the disaster in this one of the world that can no longer be split into isolated fragments to the people of india who representatives we are we make an appeal to join us with a faith and confidence with the great adventure this is no time for petty and destructive criticism no time for ill will or blaming others we have to build our own mansions for the free india where all her children may dwell the appointed day has come the day appointed by destiny the day stands forth again after long slumber and struggle awake vital free and independent the past calling on to us still in some measure and we have to do much before we redeem to the place we have so we have an we have an so much taken yet a turning point is past the history begins a new for us the history which we shall leave and act and others will write about that high standard all of us to whatever religion we may belong are equally the children of india with an equal rights privileges and obligation we cannot encourage communism 
or narrow mindedness for no nation can be great whose peoples are narrow in the thoughts or in action to the nation and the peoples of the world we send greetings and pleas ourselves to cooperate with them in furthering peace freedom and democracy and the in and to india our much loved motherland the asian and the eternal and the ever new we pray our reverent homage and we bind ourselves afresh to the service jai hind here our chapter gets finished and now we will study about the author one of the foremost leader of the indian freedom struggle and the first prime minister of the independent india pandit jawahar lal nehru was born to swaroop rani from the year 1863 to the year 1954 and pandit moti lal nehru from the year 1861 to 1931 at the kashmiri pandit family in the ilhabad on the november 14 1889 he was educated at horror harrow public school london and trinity college cambridge nehru played a key role in building the modern india he effectively coped with the formidable challenges of the country faced the disorder and the marx excludes of the people across the new borders establishment of the political and the administrative infrastructure and shaping the india's foreign policy he died of the heart attack on the may 27 in the year 1964 nehru was a polyphilic writer in english he wrote a number of books such as the discovery of india glimpses of world history and an autobiography towards freedom now we'll study the notes and the glossary trust meeting destiny faith redeem fulfill or to carry out place promise stroke means knock solemn serious dedication stands for commitment and devotion quest that means search tackleless pathless striving determined effort grandeur magnificence trump victory achievement achievement success assembly constituents assembly of india sovereignism supreme nevertheless all the same yet beckon single incessant unending greatest man of our generation mahatma gandhi sealing strict faithful cru- crucial significant a new star rises the star of freedom from the con- colonial rule materializes happens becomes a reality cloud troubles in compass cover surround architecture of the nation mahatma gandhi embodying representing a lift up the torch of the freedom the freedom as a torch that light up the darkness of bond age stray loose someone's path imprint impression tempest storm our brothers and sisters people of pakistan endurable effort communism religious fanaticizing now let's understand the text number 1 what is the place that we shall redeem number 2 what does nehru mean when he says that all indians will awake to life and freedom number 3 what is the moment that comes really in the history number 4 what according to nehru is india's unending request number 5 how do we end a period of misfortune number 6 what does nehru mean by changing the future number 7 what responsibility does nehru speaks of upon whom does it rest number 8 what does nehru mean by rising a new star number 
in what the spirit should the people of india take their freedom number 10 which aspects of gandhi ji characters appeals to nehru number 11 what are the nehru's thought about the people of other side of the border number 12 what should be the indian aim at after attaining the freedom number 13 what does nehru mean when he says that we have hard work ahead for us number 14 how can we cooperate with the nations and the people number 15 what is our duty to our motherland now let's go beyond the text number 1 what are the greatest trumped and the achievement that still await us number 2 has the dream of wiping tears from everyone's eyes been fulfilled number 3 why have the dreams remained unfulfilled number 4 what are the clouds that still surround us number 5 and the last one what is what are the distinguishing features of the progressive nation page 36 chapter 5 village song by sarojini naidu now read in marriage is an important event in a person's life parents want to see their children happily married and settled in this poem however a young girl who does not wish to get married read the poem to find out why the girl takes such a decision now the poem gets starts honey child honey child whether you whether you the poem gets start honey child honey child whether are you going would you cast your jewel all to the bridge blowing would you leave the mother who on the golden grain has fed you would you grieve your lover who is riding forth to wed you mother mine to the to the wild forest i am going where upon the champa bout and champa birds are blowing to the coil haunted river is lay where lotus lilies glisten the voice of the fairy folk are calling me oh listen honey child honey child the world is full of pleasure of bridal song and cradle song and sandal scented laser your bridal robes are in the loom silver and saffron glowing your bridal cake are on the hearted oh whither are you going the bridal song and cradle song have cascaded of sorrow the laughter of the sun to read the wind of death tomorrow far sweeter sound the forest notes where forest streams are falling oh mother mine i can't i cannot stay the fairy folk are calling here the poem gets finished and now we'll study about the poet who is sarojini naidu uh, she was born in the year 1879 and died in the year 1914 uh, sarojini naidu was a child of prodigy freedom fighter and a poet she was born in the hyderabad on february 13 1879 she was a prolific writer she gave up her literary career to join the she gave up her literary career to join the freedom struggle led by the mahatma gandhi She was the first Indian woman to become the president of Indian National Congress and the first woman to become the governor of Uttar Pradesh. She was popularly known as the Night Angel of India. The poem Village Song appeared first in the first The poem Village Song appeared in her book titled as The Golden Three Sold. first published in the dodo press of london in the year 1905 and she passed away in the year 1949 about the poem india has a large tradition of folk poetry which has largely been oral it deals with the customs beliefs traditions superstitions simple joy and sorrow of the people particularly those living in the rural setting these are treated with the directness and the simplicity folk poetry aims at the presenting 
collective life. It was usually nurtured by wandering minstrels. Hence, it is reactive. Hence, it was recitative. Folk lyric does not make excessive demands upon the reader and their simplicity, vocabulary, and imagine imaginary are drawn from everyday sense and sights. Sir Rojni Naidu has captured all this quality of traditional folk poetry in her poem. In this poem are, are presented the voice of the mother pledging her with her daughter to wait for her betrothed to arrive and that of the daughter who wishes to run off to the forest and remain a child. Now we will study the notes and the glossary. Honey child, the mother addresses the girl affectionately. Bridges, winds, golden green, delicate dishes, champa, a name of a flower, coil, a song bird, black in color, bridal song, marriage song, bridal robes, wedding dresses, cadence, rhythm, laughter of the sun, happiness, pleasure of living, wind of death, sorrow or loss forest note music of a, of the nature now let's understand the poem number 1 the poem appears to be the conversation between the two person who are they number 2 where does the honey child go number 3 why should she leaves her mother and grieve the lover number 4 how does the child describe the wild forest number 5 what does the expression the world is full of pleasure means? Number six, what is the common about the bridal song and the cradle songs? Number seven, how does the poet describe the happiness and the sorrow? Number eight, how does the poet compare the forest note and the bridal song and the cradle song? Now, let's appreciate the poem. Number one, the first four lines of the poem poses the four question. What does the mother want to tell her daughter? Number two. What does the mother's appeal does have any effect on the girl? What does the girl find irritatable? Number three and the last one. How has the worldly pleasure compared with the places of the fairy land? Here the chapter gets finished. Page number 42, chapter 6, Kapil Dev. Now read in. Cricket has become an immensely popular game in India. Everyone seems to love it. Why do we all admire cricketer Kapil Dev? You will probably say because he won the previous presidential World Cup in the year 1983 under his captaincy. He has become a household name not only in our country but also wherever cricket is played. Kapil Dev is known as one of the best all-rounder in the world. What are his other admirable qualities as a human being? Here is an essay on Kapil Dev. Go through it and learn more about him. Now here the test gets started. In the year 1978, Raj Singh Dungarpur called me over a discussion of the team to go to the East Africa. While discussing that team, I remember an over ball to me earlier in the season in the Wills Trophy. A young lad called Kapil Dev had shown not only an enormous potential but also a willingness to learn. I remember telling him in that match that he should come closer to the stump because its outswinger then would be more effective. Mind you, all that happens when we are playing against each other in the same match. A couple of players from his team rushes to me thinking that I was using a bit of gamesmanship to try and to make him ball the wrong line. But that was furthest from my mind because after a long long time there was a baller in Indian cricket team who was promising and fast in the competition and and it is always a good fun to play against the good baller rather than to try your ability against the lesser fast baller. Kapil was a quick learner and in the next over he could we could see him making an effort to become 
closer to the stump and the ball and as soon as he got that right he was apparent that he was going to be a force in the cricket he bowled extremely well in that match and with his bowling set us back a great deal and helped his side to win his side was a strong anyway and could have won in normal circumstances but his was a particularly memorable spell and gave him a lot of prominences and brought him into a national focus this match was at the back of my mind when we set to pick up the team to go to east africa this was going to be a friendly tour and the team was comprised of the experienced tex player and those who were highly prom- promising we had included pataudi vishwanathan yajurvinder singh and iknath solkar among test selvots and among the youngster were kapil dev and suru nayak the two were picked to get an experience of foreign condition which would help them considerably playing abroad against an opposition which is a different under different condition with different bowlers and with the different players come in the handy at all time and goes a long way towards making one a better cricketer kapil did well on his trip he was he was not only a good bowler he got us vital breaks thoughts but also a magnificent batsman who hits many towering six and won the heart heart of east africa cricket lover one notice on this trip how kapil improved match by match and towards the end of the tour in the 3 days of game against the strongest east african side he was willing the unplayable after the team returned to india kapil was selected to play for the rest of the india in the irani trophy match at bangalore it was a trial game before the team tours to pakistan was selected kapil scored a hurricane 61 and ball again impressively and thus found a berth for himself in the side to go to the pakistan though even although even at this at that stage it was doubtful if he would rarely it would doubtful if he would really find a place for himself in the test team it was thought that the four the tour would give him a lot of experience and so when the west indies team comes to india later at that season kapil could be very useful however his performance in pakistan in the beginning was such as that he could not be ignored and he was picked for the first test in the fisalabad he it it was a good trip which afforded a fair amount of bonds to the new ball bowlers and in the first few overs kapil forced siddiq to discard his green pakistan cap for the helmet as it at as it turned out it was a wise move and in the next over the bouncer from the kapil hit siddiq flush on the helmet and went away for four byes with that one delivery kapil was proved that he could not be taken lightly in the test cricket and india after a long long time had a bowler who could use the new ball to ball with fire thereafter there was no stopping kapil he scored 59 as the night watchman and thus earned a tag of all rounder he confirmed this later in the season when he scored a century against the west indies the only time the tag of all rounder did not fit him was on in the year 1979 tour of england when this dynamic cricketer failed with the bat he bowled with a customary fire and efficiency in the test matches and also in other matches but somehow failed to get runs he used to get out in his eagerness and to hit the ball in the air rather than take 
his time to play his suit this of course was a solely due to the inexperience which was amply proved on the year 1982 tour in of england when he scored 300 runs in the three test matches after that in the year 1978 tour it has been the case of rising career graph he is now recorded to be the one of the top all rounder in the world if not the top most people talk about irman khan ian butham kapil dev and richard hardley as the leading all rounder in the world it is indeed difficult to pick the best among them all but one thing is sure any captain would love to have all the four player of them in his team to win and to win a match because all of them are attacking cricketer all of them have to put their sterling performance all of them all of them perform under the pressure and to prove that they have the flamboyance and ability to take on any opponent and any given time picking the best player out of them is basically a subject of extensive exercise and where would always be your people who would agree with you and also disagree with you on the merit and demerit of each in kapil's case he was an disadvantage of not having a strike bowler among with him which mean that the entire pressure of taking cricket is entirely on him the opponent knows the opponent also knows that since he is the only player capable of running throughout the sides they are extra careful while playing him and thus he does not always capture the kind of wickets that is expected of him also during the couple's time in india's batting has not been cons- consistent with the result of that he has hardly time to take off his bowling boots and to put off his batting shoes before he could before he called to go for the rescue act this had undoubtedly put a lot of pressure on kapil and it has at time made him play some loose shots which have brought all about his early dismissal about his early dismissal about his early dismissal notes and glossary memorable worth remembering welling nearly hurricanes violent storm customary usual recorded not to be ignored sterling excellent in quality flamboyance confident wigged out strike with a hard blow incredible means unbelievable appellode to show approval by clapping newsed pushed gently tributes gift impetus inspiration or boost spur spur give encouragement to bull dull dogs boring people incapable of doing some something watch worthily now let's understand the text number 1 who were the youngsters selected for the tour number 2 what was gavaskar's op- opinion about playing a match abroad number 3 what did kapil dev number 3 why did kapil dev win the hearts of east africa cricket lovers number 4 what was the trial game played before the indian team went to the pakistan number 5 What are the intention of the selector to pick the couple for the Pakistan tour? Number six. In which tour did Kapil score three hundred runs in the three Test matches? Number seven. Who were the leading all-rounder then? Number eight. Why does any captain love to have all the four leading all-rounder in his team? Number nine. Kapil does not all. always capture the wickets that was expected of him why number 10 what was the couple's greatest triumphs as a captain 
नंबर इलेवन कपिल इज अ हाउस होल्ड नेम वे क्रिकेट इज प्लेड वाई नंबर ट्वेल्व वॉट डिड हिज ब्रदर डू फॉर द ग्लोरी ही ब्राउट द इंडियन एंड देयर फैमिली एज वेल हेयर द चैप्टर गेट्स फिनिश पेज नंबर फिफ्टी एट चैप्टर सेवन द ब्रुक बाय लॉर्ड एल्फर्ड टेनिसन नाउ लीड इन आवर कंट्री इज अ लैंड ऑफ रिवर सम रिवर्स आर बिग एंड सम आर स्मॉल हैव यू एवर सीन द प्लेस ऑफ ऑरिजिन ऑफ अ रिवर मोस्ट ऑफ द रिवर राइजेज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ स्मॉल स्ट्रीम्स इन हिल एंड द माउंटेन एरियाज दीज स्मॉल स्ट्रीम समटाइम्स फॉल इन टू द बिग रिवर a stream in its course of journey covers a long distance and passes through plains valleys and forest now read the poem to know what the stream feels as it rushes to join a brimming river now the poem gets starts i come from hunts of coot and hem i make a sudden sally and sparkle out among the foam to bicker down a valley By thirty hills I hurry down, or slip between the ridges. By twenty troops, a little town and half a hundred bridges. Till last, by Philip's farm I flow to join a brimming river. For men may come and men may go, but I go on ever. I chatter over stony way, a little sharp and treble. I bubble into eddy bay, I bubble on the pebbles. With many a curve, my blanks I fret. By many a fill and fallow. and many a fairy fool and set with willow wits and mellow i chatter chatter i flow to joining the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on ever i wind about and in and out with here a bluesum sailing and here and there a lusty throats and here and there a grilling and here and there a foamy flake upon me as i travel with many a silver water breaks ever the golden gravel and drawn them all along and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on ever i steal by line i steal by lawns and grassy plot i slide by hazel cover i move the sweet forget me not that grow on happy lover i slip i slide i groom i glance among my skipping sallow i make the knitted sunbeam dance against my sandy sallow i murmur under moon and star in brammy wilderness i linger by my shiny bar i loiter around my graces and out again i curve and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may, may go but i go on ever page number 66 chapter 8 air pollution a hidden menace has it ever happened to you that when you come back home from the outside you have a running nose or you keep on coughing have rain drops ever tested sir When you are in public road you inhale a lot of polluted air and you feel uneasy many factor contributes to this air getting polluted air pollution is a hidden menace and poses a greatest threat to the mankind in the future let us read the following piece and think the way in which we can ensure that we breathe the clean and the pure air now the test get start No one can forget one of the most tragic industrial accident that occurred at Bhopal on 3rd of December in the year 1984. Deadly gas from the chemical plant operated by Union Carbide escaped into the atmosphere, killing over 4000 local residents and rendering blind and crippling a large section of the city's survivingly pollution. city survivingly population not only bhopal but now only every city every town every corner of the earth is facing the such a crucial problem every day every minute 
we breathe polluted air and may become a victim of the air pollution a man can live without food for a month without water for 2 or 3 days but he cannot live without breathing even for a single minute it is estimated that an average adult exchange 15 kg of air in a day in comparison to about 1.5 kg of the food he consumed and 2.5 kg of water he intakes it is obvious that a con It is obvious that the quantum of pollutants that enter to our body through respiration would be manifold in comparison to those taken in through the polluted water or contaminated food. Air is a mixture of gases comprising of 78% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen and a little less than 1% of argon together with 0.03% of carbon dioxide. These elements make up to 99.9% of the dry air. As long as the composition is maintained, the air is pure. If the composition is altered, that is the oxygen level gets reduced or irritating gas entered into the atmosphere, then the air is said to be polluted and inhalation of this polluted air may leads to a respiratory disorder. Our air is being poisoned with the byproducts of expanding technology society. the air pollution is nothing new but what is new is the scope and the severity of the air pollution in the recent time quite a large number of industries can be seen in the urban areas as well as in the rural pockets most of these industries spew dense amount of smoke from their chimneys what is this smoke made up of and how it is produced industries required steam and to produce its various fuel such as coal coke furnace oil is burned during burning along with the heat smoke is also produced where does this smoke goes apparently uh, it disappears in the short time but in reality it never do so instead it mingles with the atmospheric air and pollutes it we respire we respire this polluted air Con- air containing the obnoxious gases ashes and dust particles without our knowledge our lungs are slowly becoming the garbage dump for these pollutants thermal power station are rated the first among the industries that discharges a high amount of smoke and ashes other significant industries contributing to the air pollution are cement steel and ore processing industry some of the chem- chemical industries also release toxic fume into the air along with the smoke the automobile exhaust in no way less than dangerous than the industries in, than the industrial smoke it is reported that automobiles in the greater kolkata alone spew about 1500 ton of pollu- pollution into the atmosphere every day it is stated that a person living in the kolkata whether he or she is a smoker or not is forced to inhale the toxic substances equivalent to smoking two packets of cigarette a day the level of pollution in the cities like delhi mumbai and chennai are equally alarming to meet the demand of the exploiting population the number of buses ply on the road are being increased equally a greater number of lorries and other goods carrier are on the move along with the heavy vehicles use of car jeep and and two wheelers such as bike scooter and moped have increased dramatically all contributing to the significant level of the air pollution automobiles are responsible for 60% of the air pollution in the various part of the world as they release maximum carbon monoxide into the atmosphere the minimum of the air pollution at- attributed to the automobile exhaust has now reached to the peak level and if this trend is continue we may have to wear the nasal filter on our nose in future 
the damage caused by the air pollution is enormous in money alone alone it represents a loss of billions of dollar each year many flowers and vegetable crops suffer ill effect from the car exhaust gases trees have been killed by polluted pollution from the power plant cattle have been poisoned by the fumes from the smelter and recover aluminum from ore air pollution causes rubber tire on the automobiles to crack and to become porous fine building become shabby their walls blackened with the soot that has settled on them building surface may actually deteriorated because of the air pollution but the high cost of the air pollution is mostly strikingly illustrated in its damaging effect on the human body air effect air pollution causes air irrit air pollution causes eye irritation scratchy throats and respiratory illness it also contributes a number of serious disorder in the both united states and the europe period of high level of air pollution were linked to an increased number of death much direct harm is done by the air pollution scientists are alarmed because the amount of gases such as carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxide it in our atmosphere are increasing these gases tends to tap the radiation that reaches to the earth from the sun and as a consequences of which the atmosphere could become warmer this process would be eventually leads to the global warming scientists have been concerned too about the widespread uses of a substance that may destroy the atmospheric layer that protects us from the harmful kind of solar energy these substances belong to a group of chemicals and chlorofluorocarbons it is used as a refrigerant and as a cleanser and was once widely used in a spray can another concern is the acid rain this is the rain or other precipitation that contains the oxides of sulfur and nitrogen along with the other chemicals acid rain causes the damage in the lakes and river it poisons the plant and animals that lives in the water it may also affect the crops and the other plants stones buildings and momentums and the drinking water acid rain affects everything it falls on the water in the river and the lakes turns acidic for instance in sweden 4000 of lakes have been so severely affected that no fish has survived it also changes the soil nutrition that contain it washes or leaches away the nutrients like potassium calcium and magnesium from the upper layer of the soil which helps the tree to grow acid rain kills a large stretches of the forest leaving behind leafless skeleton of the tree when forests begin to die the animals and the birds in those forest follow among the growing list of the species threatened by the acid rain are the pied flycatcher and the apollo butterfly in sweden the deeper fish has vanished from the river of the central wales and the brown throats from the norwegian lake the list goes on what about our health acid rain irritates the sensitivity acid rain irritates the sensitive sensitive tissues of our eyes and lungs particularly in the children it can also cause the skin lesion living being apart even building on the spirit in poland the beautiful old buildings of krakow are slowly being destroyed by the acidic, acidic smoke in anthem in athens a city in which a highly polluted acid rain is eating into the marbles of the world famous momentum experts says that more damages has done in the past 25 years than in the previous 2000 years there are three basic approaches to control the air pollution preventive measure such as changing the raw material using the industry or the ingredients of the fuel dispersal method 
such as raising the height of the smoke latches and the correction method such as design the equipment to trap pollutants before they are escape into the atmosphere nearly all the highly industrialized countries in the world have some type of legislation to prevent and control the air pollution one difficulty is that pollutants may be carried by the wind from one country to another often for a distance of thousands of mile the depth of lakes in the eastern canada has been caused by the acid rain that was originated in the united state of america acids produced in the britain and france have caused the damage in sweden there have been many in initiatives in the different countries for making law setting standards and to norm to check the air pollution and ensure the quality of air air quality programs have been brought improvements in many areas for example burn, burning low sulfur coal and oil in the factories and the power plants have lowered the pollution in many of the cities to meet standards automobiles engineer to meet standard automobiles engine have been redesigned and the new cars have been equipped to device such as the catalyst cars has been equipped with the device such as a catalyst converter which changes the pollutants into the harm, harmless substance because of these new device the air pollution in the car exhaust has also been reduced it is not easy to bring about a new development needed to control the air pollution many many people like physicians engineers metro um, metallurgist botanist and the other are involved in the research seeking the new way vast sum of money will have to be spent in the future to clean the air and to keep it clean often pollution control means higher price to cover the cost of the control device in the emission system of the new car for example but to the most of the people the cost is justified perhaps the day will come when the people everywhere can breathe the pure air in the city where uh, whereas the sunlight is no longer blocked by the umbrella of the pollution here our text gets finished and now we'll start with the notes and glossary industrial means relating to the industries union carbide name of the industry in bhopal crippling means damaging victim someone who is suffering as a result of something intake means consumption manifold of many different kinds contaminated impure argon chemically inactive gas severity seriousness sweep throw out obnoxious unpleasant exhaust a gas or the stream out of the engine of a car etc flying running minance threads smelters furnaces porous having small holes chlorofluorocarbons chemical used for cooling in the refrigerator precipitation fall of rain snow or hail leaches away washes away lesions wound or injuries smoke a mixture of smoke and fog ingredients things used for making something dispersal measure way of scattering something smoke stick tall chimneys that carry smoke away from the factories trap retain legislation a body of law meteorologists a person who study weather condition emission system a system of sending out the smoke now let's understand the text number 1 what accident took place at bhopal in the year 1984 number 2 why is it called an industrial accident number 3 what are the tragic consequences for it number 4 how is air important for man number 5 what is the major source of contamination of the human body number 
वॉट इज द कम्पोजिशन ऑफ एयर नंबर सेवन वॉट इज एयर सेट टू नंबर सेवन वेन इज एयर सेट टू बी पॉल्यूटेड नंबर एट वाट फ्यूज टू यू डू द इंडस्ट्री यूजेस नंबर नाइन हाउ डज द रिलीज स्मोक अफेक्ट मैन नंबर टेन वाई डू द थर्मो पावर स्टेशन काउज मोर पॉल्यूशन नंबर इलेवन वॉट आर द अदर इंडस्ट्रीज इक्वली हार्मफुल फॉर अस नंबर ट्वेल्व वाई आर द ऑटोमोबाइल्स इंक्रीजिंग ऑन द रोड नंबर थर्टीन हाउ डू द ऑटोमोबाइल कंट्रीब्यूट टू द एयर पॉल्यूशन नंबर फोर्टीन वॉट आर द इफेक्ट ऑफ द एयर पॉल्यूशन ऑन वेजिटेबल क्रॉप्स एंड ट्रीज नंबर फिफ्टीन हाउ आर बिल्डिंग अफेक्ट्स द पॉल्यूटेड एयर नंबर सिक्सटीन वाट हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम्स आर काउज बाय द एयर पॉल्यूशन नंबर सेवेंटीन हाउ इज एयर पॉल्यूशन रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंक्रीजिंग द टेम्परेचर नंबर एटीन वाट हार्म कैन रेफ्रिजरेंट डू नंबर नाइनटीन वॉट इज एसिड ड्रेन नंबर ट्वेंटी हाउ इज एसिड रेन नंबर ट्वेंटी हाउ इज वाटर अफेक्टेड बाय द एसिड ड्रेन नंबर ट्वेंटी वन वॉट इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ एसिड रेन ऑन सॉइल नंबर ट्वेंटी टू वॉट आर द वे टू कंट्रोल एयर पॉल्यूशन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री How have the different countries tried to check it? Number twenty-four. How have the air quality program brought us benefit? Number twenty-five. Why do we still need to find find out a better way to control air pollution? Now let's go beyond the text. Number one. Why does the oxygen level in the atmosphere get reduced? what could be its consequences number 2 how do the chemical industries cause dangerous for air pollution what is its far reaching consequences number 3 how is acid rain caused number 4 how does polluted air travels from one country to another number 5 and the last one what steps can be taken to reduce the air pollution caused by the automobile is the air pollution a global problem now here our chapter gets finished and now we'll start a new one page number 78 chapter 9 virtue by george herbert now lead in many things that fill our heart with joy are short lived flowers wither season changes night follows by the day only virtue has a eternal value and never perishes Now here the text gets start. Sweet day, so cool, so calm, so bright. The bridal of the earth and sky. The dew shall weep thy fall tonight, for thou must die. Sweet rose, whose hues. Sweet rose, whose hue, angry and brave, bids the rash gazer wipe his eye. Thy root is ever in its grave. and thou must die sweet spring full of sweet days and roses a box where sweets compacted lie my music so ye have your closers and all must die only a sweet and a virtuous soul like season had timber never gives but through the whole world turn to coal then chiefly leaves Here the poem gets finished, and now we'll study about the poet. During the 17th century, a number of poets in England wrote dramatic and argumentic poem. They wrote bo- both love poem and the religious poem, which blended emotions with intellect. Notable among them were John Donne, George Herbert, and Andrew Marvell. A clergyman and a great orator, George Herbert. who lived from the year 1593 to the year 1633 was essentially a religious poet virtue the collar and the pulley are the few of his well known poems and now we'll study about the poem the poem virtue appeared as a collection of verses titled the temple in the year 1633 it depicts a worth of a true and the noble soul 
Mary beauty is not enough it should be combined with the virtue in order to endure earthly beauty represents by sweet day sweet rose and a sweet spring is short lived but a sweet and a virtuous soul lives forever notes and glossary bridal pertaining to a wedding dew moisture deposited from the air on cooling especially at the night in the form of small drops upon the surface of the object weep means cry hue color bits in white rash tending to act in haste and without due consideration gadger one who looks steadily and intently compacted compressed or condensed seasoned made suitable for the use as a timber by adjusting the moisture content timber wood suitable for building or carpentry gives to yield to the pressure or to collapse or to break down now let's understand the poem how is the sweetness of the day is described number 2 whose wedding is referred to in the first stranger number 3 who number 3 who lament who laments in the first stranger and whose death is mourned there number 4 how does the poet describes the rose number 5 what does the spring com- comprised number 5 what does the spring comprised number 6 what are the adjectives used to describe the soul number 7 who is the who is the soul compared to number 8 what is the distinguishing quality of a soul now let's appreciate the poem number 1 what are the images of the nature that the poet uses in the first stranja number 2 who is personified in the first stranja number 3 why is the color of rose is described as anger and brave Number four, where does the root of the rose lie? Number five, do you find any far-fetched comparison in the third stranja? What it is? Number six, what does the poet mean by music in the third stranja? Number seven, how is the immorality? How is the immorality of the soul established? Number eight. What are the objects of physical beauty that are described in the poem? Number nine and the last one. How is the sweet and the virtuous soul described? Here the uh, here our this chapter gets finished, and now we'll start with the new one. Page number eighty-three, chapter ten, schools goodbye by Lord Eustek Perisi. Now lead in. This is your final year in the school. You will say goodbye to your school as soon as your text examination is over, won't you? Your last day of the school will be a sorrowful one as you are going to leave it for good. You won't be able to enjoy the life at the school ever again. You feel emotionally attached to your school. When you say goodbye to it, it is like saying goodbye to your own family but your education does not ends here you move out from the school to a wider world to prepare yourself for facing the challenges in the life now read the lesson to learn how to face the reality of the life now that here text gets start you are now you are now about to leave the school and before you go we desire to send you our best wishes for your future welfare although you are parting from school in which you have been spent so many of years we hope you will not forget it and think that your education is finished in whatever trade or profession you desire to follow you soon you will soon find that if you are ambitious to succeed in it you must continue your education success in life is not easily secured it's only come to those who work hard and continue learning very soon you will require to choose a trade or profession choose it with a great care and avoid as far as you can any occupation that leads nowhere 
aim rather at the work that has in its promises of an interesting and happy future and if at the first you are forced to take a job that can only last for a short time try to get one as soon as possible that is your own liking if at any time you are in doubt as to cho- as to choose you should make do not hesitate to ask advice from the one of your teacher success in life depends largely on the good health keep your body fit and by cleanliness fresh air regular habits and suitable recreation makes yourself strong to be play game and do it in every sense of the world avoid anything that will sap your health smoking in your youth stun the body and clouds the brain be temperate in all the things and beware of drink it's a deadly enemy of health and efficiency above all remember that your character is a priceless possession keep it is therefore untarnished be truthful in all things considerate to everybody fair to your re- revival fair to your rivals uh, fair to your rivals kind and helpful to all those who are weak and suffering and do not be afraid to have courage to stand up for what is good pure and noble avoid gambling in every form it is a mean game trying to get something for nothing and at somebody's cost make professions for hard time make provision for the hard time in your laser hour avoid marrying idling filling such hours with interesting hobbies good books and with the good companionship and associations calculated to exercise over your influence for good to a large extent you will be known by the company you keep with the sound in the mind of the sound body a good character courteous manner and a loyalty is the duty for our nation and its high ideal you will by the god grace to be a credit to your family a good citizen and in the whole life a real successor here the chapter gets finished and we'll study about the author The essay School's Goodbye conveys a message to the student conveys a message to the school children by Lord Eustace Percy in a formal minister of education in Britain You will benefit to you will benefit from reading this as it tells the student how to become a good human being and a citizen in future Now notes and glossary welfare the health and happiness of the people part form to leave someone ambitious actively seeking success wealth status etc succeed to achieve a desired aim secure to obtaining something as far as to the extent that as to about recreation a hobby game or the pastime sap gradually weaken stunt to prevent something or somebody from growing properly cloud to make uncertain or confused be aware of be careful be on your guard against something above all most importantly untarnished free from without any black spot considerate unselfish giving through to a happiness and comfort to others now let's understand the text number 1 who is the speaker of the essay and who are the audience number 2 what does the speaker speaks about number 3 what is the wrong notion people generally who have been say goodbye to their school number 4 Why it is necessary to continue your education even after leaving the school? Number five. What care should be required for the choice of a profession? Number six. What should you do if you are forced to take up a job 
you do not like number 7 who should you seek advice from if you are not able to decide on the right profession number 8 what are the things that prevent somebody from achieving success number 9 what is the most imp- most essential number 9 what is most essential for achieving success in life number 10 how can you keep in good health number 11 what should be avoided to remain healthy number 12 what is the priceless con- what is the priceless possession of an individual how can one's character be kept sound and strong number 14 what should be avoided to safeguard one's character number 15 how should one spend one's leisure time number 16 how can an individual prove himself an asset to the nation now let's understand the text better number 1 who are the real audience in the essay number 2 why does the speaker advise the audience to continue their education after school Number 3 why do students seek advice from their teacher number 4 how does good health helps you number 5 what is the harm effect of smoking number 6 why why is drink called deadly enemy of health and efficiency number 7 why is the character a priceless possession of a human being question number 8 why should we help the weak and suffering number 9 what do you mean by hard time question number 10 how can we spend our leisure hour wisely question number 11 and the last one how can we achieve the real success here our chapter gets finished and now we'll start a new one